So for this question, I've split it into two different parts. For part A, we're looking to solve for the output of our system, which is C. You can see that on the diagram as well. And we want it in terms of the inputs, R and D. So there's two inputs to this system. R is just going to be like a normal one, but D is likely to be a disturbance. Um, and we've also got um, the transfer functions inside the blocks um, to use as well. The second part of the question, part B, is going to be looking at isolating the transfer function C divided by D and C divided by R. So let's start with part A. We're just looking for an expression for C. Alright, so I'm going to do this by writing an equation moving from left to right across the diagram. So going into my summing junction here, I have R and it's going to be positive and I have a second um, input to this um, summing junction and we need to track it back all the way to here um, and relate it to the, the output of our overall system C and also these um, two blocks. So at this point, the signal is C. To be able to jump this block, I need to multiply that by G4. So at this point, I'm going to get C times G4. And then to jump this other one, again, I need to multiply by what's in, um, inside my block here. So I'm going to get C times G4 times G3 as well. And that's the signal coming in. And we know that it's going to be negative. All right, so this expression here now represents the signal that I have at the output of my summing junction. So to be able to now jump over again, I need to multiply this signal by what's inside the block, which is G1. So this now brings me to this point here in my system. So I've now entered into another summing junction. So we can see that the input signal here needs to be positive, and that's what we've written down so far. And we need to add on the input here, which we've just got being called D. So this now brings us to this point in the system. This is the signal here. So again, we need to jump across our diagram. So to jump pass over this um, block, we need to multiply the whole thing by G2. And we've now ended up at the output to our system. So this whole thing here has to be equal to the output, which is C. So for this part A, I wanted an equation for C equals, but at the moment we have C on both sides of the equation. So we need to perform a little bit of algebra to try and clean that up and just get one C is equal to um, everything else inside the equation. So I'm going to start by expanding out the bracket and putting this G2 in. Uh, G1, like so. Now I'm going to try and expand this one out inside the bracket as well. Now I want to put everything with C on one side of the equation, everything without on the other. Okay, so I've achieved that. Now what I want to do is factorize C. Oopsie. So this should be 1 from here. Plus, we get that. And now if I want C on its own, I just need to divide this across to the other side. So let me copy this down for this line of working. And now we're going to divide everything by this. So it's going to be R. plus D, oopsie, I missed the one plus over here, all right, so that's the answer to part A, okay, we've got an expression for C, the output of our system, in terms of the two inputs, R and D, as well as all the other um, transfer system, uh, sorry, transfer functions from the blocks.
Alright, so part B now was to isolate the transfer functions so that we just get C on D and C on R. So if we look at what we've got um, solved for in part A, um, we're not really able to just solve for those um, transfer functions straight up um, because we have two inputs to our system, the R and the D. So what we have to do to get um, the isolated transfer functions is let's say we want um, C divided by R. What we need to do is set all the other inputs to zero. So in this case, we've only got one other input, which is D. So we need to set it to zero. So if we go and uh, evaluate what happens to this transfer function, so R is going to still be not zero, so we'll keep that. But here we've set D to zero, so that's all going to go away. And it has to be equal to C on the other side. So now when we want C divided by R, this is going to divide to the other side of the equation. And all that we're left with is this part here. So that becomes our transfer function for C on R. So the other one we wanted was D on R. So in order to do this, um, sorry, <laughs> it was not that. It was we wanted um, C on D as the other one, the output over the input. All right, so what that means is now we need to set all the other inputs to zero. So oop, the only other input that we had was the R one. So that needs to go to zero. So if we now go through and apply the same kind of process onto this equation, this term here is going to go to zero because R has gone to zero. This remains the same. And C on the other side remains the same. So we can rearrange for C divided by R, sorry, C divided by D, um, just by dividing this down. Okay, and that's what we end up with for the other answer. So uh, that's all there is for this video, and I'll see you in another one.